Welcome to the Transforming Assessment Series. This session will be looking at assessment and problem-based scenarios uh, presented by Dr. Terry Stewart from Massey University in New Zealand. Uh, this was recorded on the 8th of September, uh, approximately 4.30pm uh, in the afternoon. Uh, the duration of this recording is going to be about 1 hour and 13 minutes and that includes post-session post discussion. So I'll now hand you over to uh, Jeff Crisp, our project leader, and then he'll introduce very briefly uh, Terry Stewart. Natural resources, uh, and also from the, uh, he's been seconded into the academic development unit and has been doing some work with them. Terry's area, uh, of course, is uh, natural resources, uh, and he'll give you a bit of a, a heads up of some of the things that he's been doing, but he works in plant protection. And uh, I actually got to know Terry uh, through a joint session uh, that we went to, or we actually both presented in Queensland uh, last year, to do with scenario-based learning interactive, um, to do with problem-based learning on the, or problem-based activities on the web. So that's what uh, Terry is going to talk about tonight, um, uh, amongst other things, but uh, about the use of problem-based learning, problem-based activities in the assessment of those. So Terry, I'm going to hand over to you now. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Jeffrey. I'll just um, try and put the video on so that people can uh, can see me. Uh, hopefully, you can see me there. I've I've had to uh, I've had to uh, rearrange my office because it's not a uh, studio, of course. So I've shifted the rubbish tin, and I'm sitting here in the corner, so there's a bit of a uh, bit of light on me. Uh, so at least you can see my face. Well, uh, just like to thank uh, Jeffrey and his team for inviting me uh, to give. A webinar tonight. Uh, I'm someone who's been uh, involved in scenario-based learning, uh, or case-based learning, or problem-based learning, uh, as you'd like to call it, for probably over 20 years uh, now. I've tried to incorporate it on uh, in, into my own lessons. And um, when uh, Jeffrey asked me to, to give a webinar, I thought, well, what, you know, what can I talk about? Uh, I mean, it's a huge, huge area. Uh, you could talk about design of lessons, uh, you could talk about uh, SBL Interactive, which is the, the piece of software that I use. Uh, you can talk about um, all manner of things, but uh, looking at the, the theme of the, the webinar, it's assessment. So my feeling is that uh, perhaps uh, that should be the focus. And so what I'd like to do uh, in this session is to, uh, is to cover uh, three possibly four, but uh, we'll probably only get to three, uh, example lessons uh, that are used here at Massey. And each one of them are, is assessed a little differently. So um, perhaps we could walk through those. Uh, it'll show you problem-based learning or scenario-based learning in context, which I think is quite important because often uh, you may see a scenario or you may see um, maybe a problem-based exercise uh, often divorced from the lesson itself, and so you're watching it out of context, and it's not always obvious to, to what's meaningful there. So I hope to go through uh, at least three lessons, and uh, perhaps stop at the uh, end of each of those lessons, and we can have a bit of a, a chat about them. Uh, but just really to give you an illustration of you know, how scenario-based learning can be used in context. Now, of course, it is subject uh, specific. Uh, it's got to be that way because it is contextual. Uh, but I'll try to, uh, to, with the three scenarios, you know, a, a broad subject area, uh, as I've done so. Now, now just before uh, I start to go into the examples, because we can do this, um, uh, and it will just give me an idea of, of who's online, uh, can I have a show of hands uh, for people that are involved in uh, teaching support or learning support. So if you'd just like to, uh, to click the little hands, if, you, if your main job is to help other, uh, to help help academics or people design lessons. Okay, we've got a few people there. How about a show of hands if, um, if you're actually a discipline teacher? So uh, you're a lecturer, tutor, and you're teaching a specific subject. Okay, we've got a good range of people, good range of people there as well. So, I guess the rest of you would probably fall into that category of uh, a general category of other. So, um, okay, we'll start with the first lesson. Uh, now, as uh, Jeffrey 
said, I'm a, uh, a plant protection uh, teacher. Uh, that's, uh, that's what I lecture in. And what I'd like to show you uh, first is uh, one of my own lessons. Uh, talk through the sort of lesson objectives. Uh, and you can see how that, how the scenario that I use fits into that lesson and, uh, and most importantly how it's, how it's assessed. So if we go to the first uh, slide here, so we should be seeing it fairly soon. So this is um, this is an example of uh, a scenario where uh, the report's used as, as an assessment, and it's um, it's used in one of my own papers. Uh, now this is a 300 level paper, and it, uh, it's a paper that uh, is designed to to teach students um, pest and disease management. Uh, techniques and practices. Uh, so a lot of these students that do this paper, uh, once they graduate, they'll go out and they'll become uh, consultants. Uh, they'll assist growers and like, manage properties. And the idea of this paper is to really give them uh, some appreciation of um, the complexities, if you like, of, uh, of how to um, uh, manage, a, say, a spray program or a uh, pest and disease control. So um, this is what the lesson's about. Uh, the three main assignments in the paper. This is the, uh, the final lesson. And its, uh, its objective is to give students um, practice really at making these key uh, pest management decisions at crucial times of, of the season uh, while they're growing, uh, while they're growing. A, uh, a virtual crop. So you can see the lesson objectives there. Um, the crop that we've selected is, uh, is apples. Now, uh, apples are uh, an export crop in New Zealand. About 90% of them are, are um, shipped overseas. And it's a highly technical operation. Uh, what's more, um, the, uh, the various pest and disease uh, management techniques that are used, the various sprays that are used, uh, have to be justified to the overseas market. So um, these fruit sold into uh, the likes of, say, the UK supermarkets or the USA, various countries. And um, it has to be proven that they're growing uh, under good practice. So the sprays aren't just put on willy-nilly. that uh, They're actually thought about, uh, considered, and only um, used when, when needed. So, uh, so the idea is to um, give the students a sense of the complexity of that type of management. It is a very complex uh, type of um, activity. So the idea of the scenario is to expose them to that and, uh, so that they can, uh, they can um, just get an appreciation of the complexity. So when, is this, uh, when does this lesson take place? It's towards the end of the course. It's worth 15% of, uh, of the mark. And generally, we expect students to take about 35 hours. Now, before we throw them into this, we give them some resources. Uh, they get the customised version of the fruit production manual that growers get. This is um, quite a large manual that the industry gives them. Students get a cut-down version, a simplified version. It's 138 pages. And a lot of um, online pesticide specifications they can, they can go to. So those are the resources they have. Uh, as I said, it's towards the end of the course. So uh, by this stage, we've had lectures in um, uh, what they need to think about as far as this sort of decision making. Now what they've got to do is they have, um, someone said how big is the full version? Uh, well, 